Welcome back. Welcome back to Kent and Habiba. My name is Habiba. I'll be your hostess. And today's tea party was inspired by these flowers my son sent to me from out of state, 1-800-Flowers, not sponsored. <laughs> these were flowers for Mother's Day. And so they were a couple of days old and they didn't look the best. Just look at them. So again, they were a few days old and a little wilted, but I really didn't want to waste them. I thought we could do something creative with them. So let's have a tea party. Besides the flowers, I'm definitely going to need some bread. And of course, I'm going to need some fruit. The more fruit you have or the more variety, the better. I have these blueberries and strawberries. And so I'm going to go ahead and wash them really well. I like to add salt to the water or baking soda. So my goal for this tea party is a low budget but fancy enough tea party using things I already own. So I'm not going out to buy a lot of things, I'm going to use what I already have. If you've been watching me for a while then you know I love a good tea party, a formal sit down party. And I have a list of party essentials on my blog that you can check out later. Food is definitely one of my love languages, right? I love to prepare food, make charcuterie boards, anything pretty. I love dessert. <laughs> I love setting up tables or table settings. And yeah, typically my uh, table settings tend to be more formal and my tea parties tend to be, you know, the traditional British inspired tea parties. But for this tea party, we're gonna do something different. So let's say you have a special event, which you might choose to do in your home or outdoors at, you know, an event center. Maybe it's for an anniversary, a birthday, um, a women's group, whatever the occasion. This is definitely a great idea. Maybe you don't want people seated, you know, at a table. Maybe you want them to socialize and move around. Maybe you have more than one table. So I'm taking away the chairs because I want people to be able to walk around the table. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a tablecloth. If you're trying to be really formal, a white tablecloth is the best thing to use. Today I'm not formal, so I'm going to use this striped tablecloth that has these tassels and yeah. Now when it comes to flowers, you want usually to use low cut flowers so that it doesn't block people's faces if they're seated. If they're not gonna be seated, then you can use some tall, grand flowers as a great centerpiece. However, today we've got our struggling flowers, so let's see how we can transform them. So I asked my son to go outside and get me some branches off the tree so that I could use this as a filler, basically to kind of spruce up these wilted looking flowers. So let's see how that goes. So I'm just adding some flower food or plant food to the water and that's going to prevent the flowers from wilting further, kind of spruce them up along with the branches that I'm going to add. To be honest, as I was adding the tree branches, I wasn't sure how it was going to come out and when it was done, I didn't like it. So I decided to start over with some new branches also from the front of my house. These are some holly branches from a hedge and I like the scale, I love the leaves. They're smaller, they're shiny, they're just more vibrant. And I felt these were gonna work better for my bouquet or what I was trying to achieve. So I think it's important to use what you have before you you know, automatically decide to run out to the store and waste money when you didn't have to. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut the bottom or the stems of the roses and add them to the vase. Now, typically, if I were planning a party, uh, afternoon tea party for a lot of people, I would have bought the flowers fresh um, you know, the day of the event. But again, these were flowers sent to me by my son for Mother's Day, so I thought I would reuse them. You know, it's the thought that counts. So that's my before, the wilted looking flowers. And this is my after. Look how pretty that bouquet turned out. 
With the fresh new greenery, it really makes the flowers pop, the colors pop, and they just look amazing. Doesn't it look like a brand new bouquet? So the lesson is buy the flowers the day of your event, but if you have some older flowers, don't just throw them out. Maybe add some fresh new greenery to spruce them up. Next, I'm going to add napkins or serviettes to the table. A very practical uh, alternative here in the USA is paper napkins. You can find them everywhere instead of fabric. So paper napkins come in so many different colors and patterns and sizes. So you can check with TJ Maxx or Tuesdays or even Walmart. So I'm going to apply the uh, napkins to my table evenly spaced and each napkin will hold a cup and saucer depending on how many guests you are uh, expecting to come. Of course for a more formal setting or occasion you can go ahead and use fabric or cotton uh, napkins especially those vintage ones that have the embroidery like our grandmas used to have. So for the china, we're going to mix and match different sets, which is kind of fun because again, I'm not trying to be very formal. And for this type of tea party, it actually is a lot prettier if you can have different sets, especially when most people may not have 12 or 20 of the same cups and sauces when you're dealing with vintage china. So I'm adding the cups and saucers to the tops of the napkins. And again, with this type of setting, it's intended for people to grab their cup and saucer and socialize or mingle uh, holding the cup and saucer with them so they're not seated at the table. So you can add as many cups and saucers to your table as you are expecting guests. I love collecting vintage china and we go to thrift stores, consignment stores, but also auctions. So you can go to auctions in-house or online and these particular I love 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 they're from France they are so delicate so dainty so pretty I absolutely love them and I have a full set with plates and bowls and in the future I'll share a nice table setting a large table setting for you in my formal dining room so here are the cups and sauces set out as you can see we group the ones that are similar together and now we're going to need some cutlery. So for your cups and saucers, you're going to need small spoons, the British style or size small spoons, which can be a challenge to find here in the US. Because if you notice, American size teaspoons, which I have right there, is a lot larger. See, there is a dinner spoon and then there is a American teaspoon. You can see it's quite large next to a very small British size teaspoon. So as you can see, the handle of the teacup is pointing towards the right and I put the teaspoon towards the opposite direction in front. In the US, you can find these smaller teaspoons in places like Home Goods or these quirky teaspoons in places like World Market or even fancy stores like Williams Sonoma. I mean, you just have to kind of look around and I've kind of collected teaspoons over the years because I love tea parties. Now, of course, you can't have a tea party without having some tea. So make sure you have a variety of different teas. And this particular tea in the red canister is English breakfast tea, which was actually a gift from a subscriber. It's wonderful how many different options of tea there are, especially things like Earl Grey tea, Irish breakfast tea, chamomile tea, oolong tea, ginger tea, mint tea. <laughs> Make sure you also have some decaffeinated tea as an option. I love including these flowering teas from Blooming Tea and I will leave a link to them in the description box. They are so pretty. I also have this tea box or tea caddy in which I have some honey sticks which come in pretty handy for individual servings of honey. And I also have tea bags. I love this Ama Tea Black Currant Burst. It's so fruity and delicious. Now typically traditional English uh, tea parties are done with loose tea. 
And as you may know, loose tea is a lot more formal, but also a lot more intense and generally a better option for a tea party. But you can certainly use tea bags if that's the only thing you have. Now, you also are going to need some milk and sugar holders. And keep in mind when you have a large party or different people, a number of people, you're gonna need more than one set of the milk and sugar holders. Don't forget your tea strainers for the table, especially if you're serving loose tea. Now when it comes to milk, make sure you have an option of dairy, but also of plant-based milk like almond milk so that your guests can have the option if they don't like dairy. Granulated sugar is very common in the United States instead of sugar cubes, but you can certainly make sugar cubes and I shared that with you in a previous video. Isn't this teapot so cute? So cute, right? Really pretty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and boil my water in my electric teapot, but you can certainly use a kettle on the stove. And I love a good ramekin. Ramekins come in so handy to hold the honey or your preserves or your lemon wedges on the table. So make sure you have a number of them. Now, for those that don't know me or are new to this channel, by the way, again, my name is Habiba, Habiba to now, and I am actually a physician or medical doctor turned content creator. I love bringing lifestyle videos to YouTube. I share my family, home and garden and lots of cooking on this channel. So if you like that sort of content and you wanna see more tea parties or more table settings, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe we would love to have you in the family I love how this teapot from tea bloom comes with a stand that you can add a votive to and that way the tea stays warm so it also has this little grid where the teapot will sit on it also comes with this diffuser which is heat safe and it's kind of like a strainer, a glass strainer, but I'm not gonna use it today because I'm going to be using one of the flowering teas. So of course I have already preheated my teapot by adding hot water to it, you know, rinsing the hot water out of the teapot and that warms it before you actually make the tea. Ideally, I probably wouldn't make the tea until my guests arrive, and then I would let the tea sit for at least five minutes for it to brew, and in this case, the blooming flower will fully open up, and it's so beautiful. You can get so many different types of flowers with this tea. So your tea party is going to need a display or somewhere to present your food and your desserts. So a tiered dessert stand is what is typically used and you can find those in many stores. And I've used that a number of times. But if you can't find that, you can find some single cake stands of different types and just stack them or just use a simple dinner plate or different types of plates, pretty plates that you have. Next, you're going to need food, obviously. No one comes to a tea party for just tea. You also want some food. So here, Kareem, my son is helping me make some egg sandwiches or the filling for the egg sandwiches. Typically, you would have sandwiches, scones, and different types of desserts served at your afternoon tea party. Now, here in America, I'm going to start off with some basic turkey sandwiches, but we're going to transform these sandwiches into something special because nobody's going to your tea party if your sandwiches look basic or you just put something they could find at home easily. <laughs> So let's dress it up a little. So I'm going to cut off the crusts. And don't worry, we're not going to waste the crusts. My sons and Kenton, my husband, will be eating them. So don't worry about that. But we're going to make our sandwiches look nice and dainty so they are easy to pick up. And they actually will give you more servings. Typically, you can cut each sandwich into two or three fingers. It's called three fingers, but here I cut them into two. And I like the idea of standing them up. I just think it's a lot more pretty and just elegant. It just makes the sandwich look that much more interesting instead of laying flat, but that's totally optional. 
Now, depending on what filling you're using for the bread, I would suggest you butter the bread first. That way the sandwich stays together and the bread doesn't fall apart. Here I'm using the egg salad mixture. Again, just cutting the crust off and making it a little bit more elegant. <laughs> So here's my before, very basic, and this is the final presentation. I think it looks a lot better. What do you think? A lot more elegant. And this, in case you're wondering, is collard greens found in the USA in the South. <laughs> I live in North Carolina. So I thought it would be very nice to have collard greens on my table because it's my tea party. <laughs> and I want to mix it up. So guess what these are? These look like biscuits, right? They actually look like Southern biscuits, but this is actually made with mashed potatoes. So he found this recipe and when he made it, I thought it would be a perfect base for my collard greens. So don't be afraid to mix it up and use things that are local to your area. Things like mini meatballs or spring rolls or small kebabs or mini burgers that are easy to grab. So there, what do you think? collard greens on a potato biscuit. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so what dessert will we be serving at our tea party? I'm gonna call this cake the struggle cake. So Kareem, my son and husband Kenton made this cake for me for Mother's Day. But as you can see, it's not their finest work or at least I wouldn't serve this at a gathering with other people but I do appreciate the sentiment and that they tried. So we're gonna try to transform this cake and make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now they have strawberries on top, as you can see, which I'm taking off, but you know, after a couple of days, strawberries just don't do well. So I'm going to remove this cake and put it on a smaller cake stand because I think the stand it's sitting on is too large and it looks a little sloppy. So let's put it there and I'm not gonna refrost it because they were very proud of their cream cheese frosting. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Clearly this is a homemade cake, but like I said, it's the thought that counts, right? So we're not gonna refrost it. However, I could have put it in the fridge to set a little bit better. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and add my blueberries and strawberries. So this is the fruit that I had earlier. I went ahead and sliced it and put it on a paper towel to dry before applying it to the cake. So make sure you dry the fruit off on a paper towel before you apply it. I apply some of the strawberries to the base of the cake and it's already starting to look better. <laughs> and now I'm adding some peaches to the top and I just think that gives it a nice pop of color. It is so summery and pretty, don't you think? Look at that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add some confectioner's powdered sugar to the top. And that just brings it all together. So it goes to show you how a little fruit on a cake <laughs> can transform it. So the next time you're frustrated that your cake doesn't look well or doesn't look good, go ahead and add some fruit to it, assuming it works well with the flavor of the think? cake. <laughs> so there you go. Look at my before mm. and look at my after. I am pleased with it. It could be better, of course, if I had let the frosting set, but I think it's an improvement. So onto the table we go. And ladies and gentlemen, I think our table is ready. Of course, if you were here, we would have a lot more food options. I'm just gonna go ahead and light a candle because our tea party has extended into the evening. Now, typically a tea party is held around 4 p.m. between lunch and dinner. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed watching so far. Let's pour you a cup of tea. Tea makes everything better. <laughs> and so does fresh flowers and dessert. Also, don't forget to label your teapots. When you have a variety of teapots on the table, it's nice to label them with the different ingredients or with the different tea that you have in the teapot. That will really help your guests.
Now, depending on what kind of food you're serving, make sure you have a number of side plates and serving utensils for your guests. Now let's talk about desserts. I didn't show you a lot of desserts, but if this had been a tea party in the fall or winter, I definitely would have included a nice big bread pudding, such as the one I share in my Caribbean fruitcake book. So this is so yummy and so delicious. I use rum and wine soaked fruit for the bread pudding, and this is a homemade rum sauce. Some pretty macaroons would be great, but if not, why not some Oreo cookies? Because in the US, you know we love our Oreo cookies. I certainly do. <laughs> you can also make a homemade pie with cherry and peaches like I did here. You can also make some mini hand pies or pies that are easy to pick up, like these apple pies I made. And I have the recipe here on YouTube. Cupcakes, frosted cupcakes are definitely a welcome addition. And look at these cupcakes I made years back with edible sugar roses. If you are pressed for time or you're not much of a baker and you can't be bothered, then definitely get some desserts from your local bakery or your favorite cafe and dessert place like this place in Cary. This is from Asali. They make the most amazing desserts. Really beautiful cupcakes and macaroons and all kinds of not only American dessert, but French dessert and Middle Eastern dessert. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you appreciated a lot of my non-traditional tips. So for your next tea party, it doesn't have to be a formal sit down. It can be a large social gathering where people can grab the food and socialize. I hope you were inspired for your next tea party slash anniversary, get together, bridal shower, birthday party, you name it. So I hope to see you soon and I'm going to leave with this beautiful picture or video of my flowers. This is several days later and they're still looking amazing, right? Thank you so much and I look forward to your comments. Bye!